All right, this is just a very, very basic tutorial on Premiere, how to open the program, a couple uh, basic shortcuts you should know, uh, and how to just create a very quick little clip and export it. So go ahead and first open up Adobe Premiere. Excuse all the blurring, I'm working on a lot of client projects right now and with client names. All right, so say new project. You can title it whatever you'd like. And just make sure that the location you have it saved to, you know, a, a folder. And I'd like to I like to keep all the assets in one in one spot. So I'll have it somewhere on my hard drive and uh you know, have a folder with the project name on it and save everything right in there. Say okay, most of these settings are usually okay. And here you go. Now, first time you open this up, it may look, may look a little bit daunting, um, but it's not that bad. Up here in the upper left-hand corner is uh, effects controls, um, you know, what, what the source is, wherever it's coming from, uh, whether it's a picture or video, it's kind of a preview, and the metadata, which you don't usually need to get in get into but and by the way if your window does not look like this go up here to windows and change the workspace i always have on editing i mean if you're doing you know kind of color correction things like that uh they'll change the um the windows as needed but the workspace i almost do everything in is the editing workspace so here in the middle is the uh, audio clip mixer you'll see the uh, left and right channels that classic uh audio levels going up and down here. Uh, this is the project window uh, when you actually see what you're working on here kind of taking shape. Uh, down here in the lower left hand corner is uh, all the files you're working on. There's a bunch of different tabs here and then this is the timeline itself. Okay so let's first start by uh, importing some things. So down here just hold down control I and that's your first shortcut and here I've got some sample footage, um, and here I mean I know what I was importing, so this is just let's just say okay for everything. You can either hit open or just hit enter. It'll import the files, and there you go. Now, double click on the first one, and we'll see the the first bit of uh, the first clip here, kind of previewing here in this window. Now, if you're not sure, I mean this is uh, almost a 30 second clip, and this does it in uh, you know in seconds and frames. So frames, seconds, minutes. And hours. So this is just over, it's about 29 and a half seconds. Um, okay, so three different shots. Shot, uh, take two. <laughs> There's three different shots there. Uh, and, you know, let, let's, let's kind of cut that up a little bit. So the first one here, let's say like that one right there. Right from when he's starting to really pick up some of that gravel. I'll hit I on the keyboard for in point. I'll hit the space bar to let it play. And I want to have it go right before this tire starts slipping. Let's move back. I'm just hitting left on the keyboard and it goes back you know, a frame at a time when you do that. There we go. Right about there. I'm going to hit O for out and I'm going to hit um, well, well, actually, first we have to create the uh, the timeline. So right-click on that and say New Sequence from Clip. And since I already designated the in and out points of that clip, it'll be just what we did. Now, I'm going to hover, see where it says V1, that's Video 1, Video Track 1. On my mouse, I'm going to use the scroll wheel and scroll up. Kind of gives me a little bit more real estate here. Same thing on A1, Audio Track 1. So I can kind of see what I'm working with there. Uh, now we're going to go back up here to this window. Steady. It's right about there. I for in point. Tap that. All right. And I want to get it right before he starts messing with the controls there because the camera jerks. Say O for out. Now, if you hit comma now, what's going to happen is it's going to put it at the beginning of the sequence here. So you know, let's just make sure that that's at the end there. And now you can go up to here the uh, preview window and hit comma and that'll drop into the timeline. Now see how it's at the end? Next time you hit comma it will be dropping it at the end of the timeline. Okay, let's set pick it up here. I for endpoint. 
pull them out, and comma. There you go. Now, if you hold down, if you just press the, uh, you could zoom to a sequence, meaning you can kind of see the entire thing. So right now, we're just kind of at the at the end part of the the timeline here. It the I don't know what the hell the name of the button is, but it's above the enter key and below the backspace key. It's all the way on the on the right hand side. And there you go. All right, now you're seeing the entire timeline. Let's go to the next clip. Yeah, let's get some of that concentration here. I for endpoint. That gets a little bit jerky, so. There we go, comma. any of that. Okay, yeah, let's get a close-up and let's have it right when he's using the controls. Okay, so, using the left and right keys so that way we get it exact. There. Maybe right about here. I for in. O for out. Comma. There you go. We can zoom to sequence again. And there you go, that's the entire timeline. It's about uh, 16 seconds and 17 frames, all of that. Now, what we could do is watch all the way through and just kind of see how it flows. And of course, on the timeline here, each thing here, each, each little box is another clip. And when you have this thing enlarged like that, you can very easily see at a glance which clip each one is. And it also has the file name at the top. This right here is the audio waveform for each clip, so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. Uh, now, one handy thing here too is you can kind of see when there are bangs or uh, in, this, in the case of music, when there are hits and things like that. So right here, there's a little bit of a spike. So there's either a bang or hits a rock. I'm not sure what it is. Let's see what that, that is. So, you know, that, that, that's, that's a good thing to know. Uh, when, when you're editing some of this stuff, especially when music is involved, which I will bring in in a second. So let's watch this all the way through, see how it flows, see if we should be uh, tightening it up at all. We're going to hit space. All right, I felt that this clip lasts a little bit too long, so I'm going to hit B for the ripple edit. I'm going to grab that and just kind of drag it to maybe here. And see what that did? It just pulled everything in with it. Now, if it was just the normal selection tool, which if you hit V, this is the normal selection tool. If I were to do that, then you have to do this. You can either select this area and hit delete, or you would take this all and bring it over. Now, that's an extra step. When you're editing like crazy and you're making a lot of little tweaks, that ripple edit tool, again, that's the B key on your keyboard, uh, is a, a huge, huge time saver. There it is again, okay? Let's watch that one more time. Again, I think that's being held a little bit too long, his, his face there, especially because it's a little bit bouncy. So maybe after that bounce right there, okay, good. Ripple edit tool also works the opposite, so let's say I wanna have this start later. And there you go. That's it. Now, here's another one. Uh, we're gonna hit V for the selection tool. We're gonna click the end of this last clip and hold down control and hit D. That automatically drops in across the solve. And since there's nothing at the end of it, it dissolves to black. Now, for the vast majority of editing projects, you're gonna be using one of two types of transitions. One, which is the jump cut, which is just essentially no transition, just like that, or the cross dissolve, whether you're dissolving to black, or let's say click click here and hit Control D, or you're just dissolving between two shots. That's the most common one. Now, there are some flashy ones you can add in, uh, but just do that very sparingly. If you're doing some kind of a, like a music video or a really flashy commercial spot or something, you might want to employ some, but just be very, very careful. Uh, generally speaking, 
the stock ones that come with Premier are not great for commercial projects. Um, I have a couple that I, I did purchase uh, that are higher end cinematic type transitions that are very flashy, um, but we're not gonna go into that one today. So let's go to the beginning of this clip and hold down Control D as well. And now you've added a dissolve in. Now, as you noticed, the audio was full blast the entire time. So go over to the effects tab right here. Now, one thing you could do is we're gonna look for, it's called constant power, and it's the type of audio transition similar to cross dissolve. Now, instead of going into audio transitions, cross fade, constant power, editing, especially the more you do, this is all about shortcuts. How fast can you get to a certain command or uh, transition or what have you? So let's close this, and here in the search field, I'm just gonna start typing in power. I already typed in power, and that's all I've got, constant power. Click that, bring it over. There you go, now let's listen. All right, great, we'll do that at the end too. All right, nice. Now, this is now 14 seconds and three frames. It feels long because there's not a whole lot, it doesn't feel like there's a whole lot going on. One way you can get around that, because you still want to show all this footage, let's say, go over to the project, this is where all the project folders are, and this is a music track that I selected. Now, again, you know, what I was saying before, these different waveforms show when different things are happening. So you know that it's a little bit quieter here, and right here is when a beat drops or something happens, more instruments come in, uh, so it's more of a dramatic moment. Here, it looks kind of repetitious again, it kind of, you know, gets quiet and it goes in. So let's go right about here, let's listen to it. Okay, I like this. So let's start right around here, because this isn't a very long clip. This is only 14 seconds. I mean, this right here is already 19 seconds into it. So I want to get it to the that beat drop a little faster. So let's say I for import. This right here shows in the lower right-hand corner of this one box. It shows you how large or, or how long the duration is of the clip that you've selected at the in and out points. So we need about 14 seconds. So let's just stretch out until it's about 14 we're gonna grab this audio only. Bring that down. Same thing versus A2, audio track two. We're gonna use the scrolling up on the mouse to, so that way we can kind of see it a little better, the waveforms. And I'd like the, let, let's just listen to it the way it is right now. All right, you'll notice that, and this is important, a lot of people don't do this, or at least a lot of beginning editors don't do this. The background noise, this machine's so loud, it's overpowering the music. We don't want that. Let's click on that clip, go to effect controls, and what that does is this is the effect controls of the clip that we've selected. Let's lower the volume on that clip. Say negative 16 and a half, sure. Let's just see. Maybe a little bit too soft. Sure, let's do that, okay. Now, let's keep that volume consistent. Now, instead of going through here and dialing it down one at a time and, and being careful with it and making sure it's exactly 14.8, let's just click here where it says volume, control C for copy, and then we're gonna go to all these other clips, select them, and just you know click and drag so that these are all selected, and, and do control V. And you'll see that the volume level of all these just went down because this right here is the volume of this particular track. So, now let's watch this all the way through one more time. All right, I'd like the beat to drop, you know, I'd like the, the other instrument to come in right as this cut is happening, as we're going to the close-up. So we see that the beat drop is right here. So that's, let's click right on that and drag it to where we want it to be. Okay. Now, since this, you know, we, let's bring this over so it starts a little earlier. Let's see how that sounds and looks. Okay, 
So that, that, that looks good. Um, now, so we, what we have here is we've already selected the clips, dropped them in the timeline, added some dissolves, uh, added the audio dissolves, threw in a music track. One more thing here, this is almost like Premiere 102, but uh, we're going to add a quick title. So go up to the top here, it says title, new title, and default still. We'll title, we'll title this end card. I love that no matter how large your monitor is, Premiere will always do this where it clips this, these buttons off. That's fine, you can just kind of rearrange the window. And there you go. All right, now, since this is where I am on the timeline, this is where it is, but I, I want this to be pop popping up at the end here when it's all black. So let's just do that so it, you know, it's more of an accurate representation of how the text will be looking. This is apparently the last font I was using. Let's just copy it and or select that and change the font. Something easy to read and perhaps spelt correctly. I always forget that. Okay, that looks good. Now, instead of eyeballing it and kind of figuring out exactly where the middle is, if you click over here in the left-hand column, horizontal center, and if you want to do vertical center, you can do that too. Now, since you add another line, it's not going to be perfectly vertical center, so click that again. There you go. And that's what that'll look like. And of course, you know, if, if this is a, a, a real um, promo, you throw in like a call to action or like a website, phone number, something like that. But just for the uh, sake of this, let's just leave it at that. Okay. Now, the end card that you just created pops up in your uh, project file window. So just click that and drag that over. And there you go. Now, as it stands right now, it's going to fade to black because this crosses off, and then this is just going to pop in. It'll look like this. Now, I hit enter, and that rendered these two crosses off just for a smoother playback. Actually, it didn't look half bad because it almost came on right when this other hit came. See that right there? So let's have that start right as that hit comes on. Of course, the music cuts out, so let's just drag that to the end here. Okay, and of course, you can add that uh, that constant power fade out at the end as well. And now to export this is Control M. Brings up the export window. Say OK or save. Say export. Now, if this is for a client, you might want to use maximum render quality. It's a subtle difference, but uh, it is there. And hit export. And there you go. And then you will have the, uh, the final file. Yeah, hopefully that helps you guys and answer some questions and uh, introduce you to the wonderful world of Adobe Premiere shortcuts as well. Make sure you subscribe. I do have more Adobe Premiere Pro tutorials in the works that are coming out, as well as a tutorial playlist for uh, more advanced features for you as you guys and gals uh, learn more and need to learn how to do uh, more advanced things with the software. That is it for me. If there's any tutorials you'd like to see, make sure you leave a comment below or hit me up on Twitter at the underscore Chris Bryant. Have a great day. Bye-bye.